All right. So uh, welcome to Top 20 Travel Sites from Home. Uh, this is one of those classes that's kind of evolved and changed as a lot of things since uh, really the COVID uh, has come out. Um, it's, the date has stayed the same. The time of day has changed. Um, as always, you can always log into it from our webpage. Right now, I'm also FaceTiming as well. Um, but And user opinions of mine, not necessarily that of the library. Please come talk to me if you have any problems. Uh, so I still am gonna go ahead and use the same boilerplates because if you are doing research at this point in time, you can still contact us. There's still reasons to use your local library, right? Normally I say that you can walk to it within town most times. You talk to human beings and there's a uh, robust content as in more than just what you find on Google. Um, so we still have access to all those tools. We just don't have access to our building. Um, as always, and now it's more important than ever, really, to do your updates, do your antivirus updates, do your malware updates, do your spyware updates, do your firewall updates, because all the hackers are now at home doing nothing but hacking. All the people that usually protect you are at home doing nothing, not at their work protecting you. So do all your updates now. Um, so we're doing a class here on the 7th or on the 14th at 7 p.m. about all the resources you can find from your library online. And we've got all sorts of ebooks. You can learn foreign languages. There's still a lot of things we can do for, for you from home. And it's been really great that we've been building up to this for the last few years without really building up for this, you know? Uh, we're ready for people who are homebound. We're ready for people who are um, unable to uh, talk, you know, over the phone or whatnot, because online you can be all those things. And so um, join from the, the meeting ID and everything else like that from, and also join our Facebook. You'll just find more updates about this in the future. So let's just jump into the kinds of things that you can find to uh, deal with stresses, uh, to travel, to get away from home while still being at home, right? This one's all about uh, dealing with anxiety, mindfulness apps, games to, to kind of help you manage life in this time. So I'm not trying to hide the fact that I'm, I'm trying to guide people to certain web pages. I want them to get all the advertisement and more links you know, as, as possible. A lot of these are gonna be uh, Apple apps, but uh, a lot of them are also Android apps because there's honestly, there's more Android apps in the world because they're easier to develop for. But uh, this stuff is more like background music and things to help soothe you when you're really on the freak out mode. Uh, this one is printable worksheets when you're trying to teach children at home. 1,447 pre free printable worksheets, word list activities. So let's check out great schools. Yeah, and it's exactly what it is. Um, a lot of these you're gonna find that have just nonsense advertisements along the sides and popping up from the bottom, mysteriously. But when you click on them, I mean, two pairs of feet. Okay, let's see what two pairs of feet. Hey, well that is a horrible thing to happen in the middle of a presentation. Um, I'm kind of surprised that uh, Zoom is still up. But it kind of looks like we got back up and running pretty quick. Now let's try again and see how horrible this goes. Okay, you can print the full size. Okay, so that works. It's just I had a little hiccupy glitch. And uh, now we find out how quickly I can get logged back into my presentation. It's not doing so bad so far. I'm quite impressed. And you notice that I'm using Linux at home instead of uh, Windows 10. That's just a uh, preference of mine. And okay, so here's our printable worksheets. And let's go F11 so that I can get rid of, so I can go into full screen mode. And boom, all right. So virtual school activities, um, a, a lot of the links that I was using 
um, went to this one link about virtualschoolactivities.com and it is just tons and tons and tons and tons of stuff. Um, and it, it's well worth checking out. So let's go ahead and hit the escape button again, virtualschoolactivities.com. There we go, virtualschoolactivities.com. Hello, MS Perini. I don't have any volume for you, but yeah, there we go. We do have volume for you. Hello. I muted myself. Yes. <laughs> hey, so we're just kind of going through some web pages that have different uh, things in there, museums. And so this is going to be the longest list of all the things that I mentioned. Some of them mm -hmm. only have a dozen or so, but this one just keeps on going. That's virtual school activities.com um, and my, my uh, presentations are always saved so you can go, always go back and, and watch them again uh, for things you missed okay. or download it um, mm -hmm. this is a great link here for uh, families when schools close virtual field trips math writing steam activities screen free activities and other stuff and this one I just kind of took a screenshot of um, nice. Disney coloring pages. So it's a thousand Disney coloring pages. So the bright side is it's Disney. Kids love it, right? Downside okay. is this page is so full of advertisements and just junk. Um, but eventually, if you scroll down, yeah, it's asking me if I want to do push notifications. No, thank you. Let's see <laughs> if I can do a Princess Aurora Crayola. Right. See if this is going to work. Uh, I did one earlier and it crashed my entire browser. Uh, we'll see how lo our local is holding out here. Come on, Disney. There you go. All right. There's Aurora. So you can click on that. You can print it out. And so it comes through when, when, uh, when it comes crunch time and you need those Disney. Oh, this is another one. Um, bensound.com, just a royalty free music. And I was playing some of that at the beginning of the presentation. Mm -hmm. And uh, Okay. Yeah, it wasn't. Uh, 12 YouTube channels with free art lessons. Uh, this one I like because I like YouTube because I like video because my mind processes seeing people do things better than just screen by screen by screen. Uh, and so, hello, Sherilyn Gary. Hi. <laughs> All right. And, and so, um, I, like, I like the YouTube stuff. Uh, here was a news article early on when it was only March 16th about a, a zoo, um, closing the zoo, but they were doing uh, a Facebook page and they're doing all sorts of videos and everything else like that. And so that was good news. And every day there's, there's more good news coming out as far as museums trying their hardest to stay open uh, while, you know, at least virtually, while they're trying not to spread any diseases. So let's check this one out. And this Disney thing is just not closing. Huh. Well, Disney. Disney's always going to have its way. Huh. Maybe because it's... No. It's stuck again. Oh, there we go. Okay, those are the virtual museums. All right. E-learning online collections got all these places. I mean, just pages and pages of virtual tours you can take. History museums, natural science. So the world might be shut to us physically. It's opening up more digitally than ever before. And so 
not to freak out. There's still some things that we can do and our children can still be educated when they can't go to school. Uh, speaking of which, my daughter is FaceTiming it right now. So uh, she's kind of getting her education via how to do videography right now. <laughs> uh, let's see, YouTube, Cincinnati Zoo, museums. Uh, this is a good old Hello Giggles um, talking about more of the museums that probably are duplicated elsewhere, but Hello Giggles is good to mention anyway. But uh, there's a little video. Is it going to play? Because I don't usually have multiple people logging in at once. It might be using too much bandwidth. But uh, there's museum, Guggenheim. Video on the corner. Video on the corner, she says. Good on them, right? Open culture. And open culture is pretty massive uh, as far as more than just tours and whatnot. Um, they've got movies and, and learning and everything else like that. It's really quite a resource but uh, learn guitar in 21 days but in, in general openculture.com is well worth searching through uh, textbooks language lessons just massive this one is more just field trips again um, this one is from Ventures and Familyhood. It's a fun little blog kind of system there. Again, more than likely these are duplicated on the other things that I've mentioned because as I've been preparing for this class, more of these kind of places are pulling from each other and growing and getting better and sharing information because, I mean, why not? I mean, it's just great things to keep our minds on in this kind of a, a event, is to uh, think about the fun things in life. I believe the Natural History Museum. So many of them. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, um, Natural History, uh, that was back on a previous link. We can go ahead and jump back in there a bit. Um, just some uh, virtual field trips, San Diego Zoo, animal cameras, Great Wall. <laughs> yep, there's a Great Wall during the COVID. Um, this one, uh, Scholastic, big name, right? Let's see what Scholastic is doing for people. Oh, sorry, this was an a, a, uh, article about the Scholastic opening it up. But uh, it's 
Yeah, so the downside of all these kind of things is there's a lot of cross-linking going on. Great. Scholastic has you covered. The publishing yeah. company is offering free yeah. courses for students. Scholastic is promoting its yeah. Learn at Home website for free. The at-home activities are for students from pre-K to sixth grade, and some are higher. Each level will feature five days' worth of content for three hours a day. Fifteen additional days of the coursework are also on the way as well, and kids can get to that content on any of the devices they have. Just another thing to put in your pocket, because they're going to be home for a little while, so they've got something they can get. Yeah, so it's Scholastic, doing good things. And I finally got Disney to close. Ah. So, virtual schools. Actually, this is the one, virtual school activities. This is the one where you were asking about natural history. Um, it's got so much up in here that at one point, I think it did have it separated into types of museums. National, national, national. Natural. Nature conservancy. Conservancy. It's one of those words, like rural. Um, let's see. Uh, and, you know, even some games, you know. So Pokemon Go, yeah, my, my daughter is holding her forehead now. Pokemon Go, the idea is you go out and you actually see things at local parks and you check in and this and that. Um, well, if people can't go outside, then they're going to make the game different. So they've redesigned their game to allow people to spend more time indoors and still feel like they're getting something out of the game. Um, that said, you know, some experts are saying as long as you stay 15, 20 foot away from other people, it's good to get outside, get some sunshine. Um, but uh, now we're into the presentation that's actually about travel. So um, back when I was setting this all up, we were still getting snow every once in a while. In fact, we had frost just the other day. So if we're talking about physical travel, people freak out when there's snow on the ground. They, they just drive without their brains. And uh, honestly, my favorite part of winter is watching it on TV from California. Actually, that's more my wife's feeling on the subject. Um, so here's a bunch of lies you're going to find on the internet about winter. Uh, leave your headlights on overnight. They, the heat they'll produce will help the car start on cold mornings. No, that'll just kill your battery. Tyler's shoveling your driveway. Spray everything down with water at night so the snow won't stick when it's wet. No, that just creates ice. Icy windshield, simply install sandpaper under the wiper blade and turn the wipers on full speed full speed until you can see clearly. Yeah, that, that's a way to ruin a windshield. Don't end up like this. Change your summer air out to winter air to avoid freezing in your tires. Summer air versus winter air. Put a two inch screw in each tread. Instant snow traction, instant puncture. How much, too much ice on your car? You use steel wool on the hood and the trunk for a quick de-icing. It'll take that ice right off, and it certainly will. It'll take off the paint as well. Tired of scraping ice off your windshield? Boil a bucket of water and throw it directly onto the windshield. Well, I mean, you'll see through because your windshield will crack to pieces and you'll have oxygen flowing directly in your face. As winter approaches, don't forget to fill your headlights with water. The water will protect the light, making it easier to snow, see on the snowy roadways. I've never even really thought to try this, but no, no, that's not likely to work. And besides creating a giant ice cube in front of your car and, and make sure the bulb doesn't light. Protect your brakes from rust and corrosion. Road salt for this winter. Apply a healthy amount of WD-40 to the actual areas where you're needing the most friction. So it sure won't squeak or rust, but it sure won't stop you either. Remove your front tires for better handling on the snow. The edge of the wheel will dig into the ice, giving you precise steering. No, just terrible ideas. So we're done with the bad ideas. Let's on to some good ideas. Here are the top 10 names in travel websites. 
you know, you're going to find some great deals on travel because you're not going to be able to travel right now. But I suppose if you're willing to bet that things are going to get better in three months and willing to book three months in advance, you might be able to get some great deals. Orbitz, Travelocity, Priceline, Kayak, with a difference of 1.52 from the top to the bottom recommendations, they're all worth investigating. There's the link down below for, for the investigation website. Uh, as far as when I do a lot of research for these sort of things, I really like Tech Boomers. It's a website designed by a son for his mother, and it comes at things from a real life approach. So if, if you kind of do a search around for YouTube, Facebook, Netflix, Netflix um, you'll see larger fonts, easier to navigate. Um, and this is not a service of the library. This is a, a free website. I did a search for travel and I ended up all these different classes. You can do a class on Airbnb, Groupon, Expedia, Travelocity, Uber, Lyft, HomeAway. Uh, HomeAway might not anymore. Expedia. So um, these are all, you click on them and you go to a class uh, that teaches you more about like Priceline or Uber, or how to use Uber and that sort of thing. Um, away from uh, tech boomers is uh, Google. Google has a uh, service called Google Travel, or they did, now it's called Trips. Very much the same kind of services, but um, let's check out. This is Ashley. She's going on a trip. A trip she started planning a while back. But right now, feels kind of rushed. 11 hours later, this isn't her hotel. And with no Wi-Fi and no data, she's okay. Because Ashley already downloaded Google Trips. So no Wi-Fi? No problem. She has everything she needs to know about her vacation right here on her phone including how to find her hotel. That's more like it. And now that she's here, working out what to do doesn't need to be quite so... overwhelming. Because with Google Trips, Ashley can make her own personalized itinerary for each day with all her must-see spots laid out on a map to help get her there. Now that she can plan in advance the travel time to each location, she doesn't need to let any opportunity pass her by. All that sightseeing is hungry work. Hang on a second. Ashley, remember that place you saved that your friend Jane recommended? Yep, this one. Right around the corner. Known for being Picasso's old stomping ground. So wherever Ashley goes on vacation, Google Trips will always give her everything she needs, right at her fingertips. Nice work, Ashley. Very nice, Ashley. So unfortunately, you know, in the future we're walking into, poor old Ashley, she's gonna be walking around with a mask on her face. But, so, travel smart. Um, Google has you covered as far as planning your trips and uh, so much interaction between your email and when you buy a ticket, it'll email it to you and then it'll automatically feed into your uh, Google Trips or Google Travel account. Um, and the app just looks stunning. And um, so it's, it's worth checking into. So other things you want to think about when you're going on any sort of a trip is the things that you're going to take with you, you know, like your mask or whatnot, but also what you don't want to go taking with you, like weaponry on an airplane. For you tonight as you prepare for your holiday travel, RC Music is Eric Cox is showing us what you better leave at home before you head to the airport. Indianapolis International Airport anticipates at least 16,000 people traveling through the checkpoints the day before Thanksgiving. So to help you speed through that process if possible, I've got some useful information from the TSA. Take a look at this table. It features toy guns, real knives, all sorts of weapons, <laughs> plenty more down there in that bin. I'm told that all of these items were found here in Iowa okay. in just the last 30 days. 
not pictured here, but also discovered by TSA. 43 firearms so far this year. They are on pace right now to possibly break the record 50 guns found last year. Now, with all of that said, some of the most overlooked items that are prohibited that you might be bringing with you when you try to come through the checkpoints here include liquid, aerosols, and gels. That's things as simple as toothpaste, shaving cream, even the water in your water bottle. Remember, guys, these items cannot exceed 3.4 ounces. If they do, they're prohibited. Another really important fact to remember, if possible, don't wrap your presents. Don't put the gift wrapping on them before you come out here. I'm told that the TSA has a really tough time with figuring out if some presents are actually safe or not without ri ripping that wrapping paper off. So the best thing to do, not wrap that or use gift bags. I educate uh, and tell passengers uh, to check, uh, make sure that they know what they're packing, uh, that it's not going to uh, delay the process. Every time we have to open uh, a bag to look at a prohibited item or something uh, concerning, it delays the process for everyone else as well. And remember, you can always go to TSA.gov and check out what you can and can bring with you before you go out to the checkpoints here. And one last thing I want to mention to you guys. You might be wondering to yourselves, what happens to all these abandoned items left here at the airport? Well, I'm told that they're sent over to the Indiana State Surplus Office where they're then sold off and that money goes to the state. At IND, Eric Cox, RTV6. <laughs> Yeah, so don't go trying to take your dumbbells with you onto a flight. Um, it, it's, or a big old hunk of knife with brass knuckles attached to it. That's, that's not as smart. But I, I kind of feel bad for the person trying to do the shaving cream because, I mean, that's eh, not Everyone as obvious. should be used to removing their 311 bag. So take that out with the answer that not go with your electronics. That can go with a woman's purse. It can go with jackets or shoes as you remove them. Most people should be used to removing their laptops from a bag and placing them in a bin with nothing under it or above it and running that by itself. Now we're also asking you to remove any other electronics from your bag. For instance, tablets or disk drives to remove those and still with nothing under them or above them or below them. We want all electronics with other electronics. And we've also got a label maker and another disk drive, and it's electronics, things that process information. We're not asking you to remove all electrical items like hair dryers or curling irons. Those can remain in your bag. We don't need the cords removed. Those can remain in the bag as well. But electronics, just run those by themselves so that we can get a better image and it doesn't clutter the bag as much. So there's some things that you do want to, uh, as you go through the claims area, you know, you want to separate things out. Uh, at the very beginning, she had a Ziploc bag that was full of smaller soaps and, and lotions and medications and things. So keep that separate so that they can process you through. So you're not that one person yeah, that's yeah. taking off socks and, and whatnot while you're standing there. Uh, when it comes to travel, I'm not really going to be the best person to talk about it because I am a bit of a hobbit. I try and stick inside my Kansas Shire. I, I don't want, I find a lot of really interesting things within a day trip because when I go on a three day trip, uh, honestly, there's a lot of warring that goes on between the family and everybody gets grumpy and tired and you get exhausted after day, about day three. But on a day trip, you can still have fun. You eat interesting things and if you make yourself sick, you'll be in your own house being sick and it's just it's a lot better day um top 10 favorite kansas travel sites not in order of rank at all uh so we've got uh trip advisor has some great kansas ideas get outdoors kansas.org is huge the highway alliances because there's a bunch of them i just put them as one but uh flyoverpeople.net wild west count uh, country travel kansas kansas sampler um, Kansas Sampler we're definitely going to get into because there's a lot going on and some things are not going to happen this year, right? Because the festival and uh, uh, KansasTravel.org, KTWU.org, and Get Rural Kansas. Rural. There's that word again. So what do I look for when I'm looking for my personal travel, my POV, right? Um, I really enjoy traveling inside the state, learning about heritage and culture. Uh, I, I like the day trips more than the four or five days. Camping, fishing, hiking, museums, zoos, history, fireworks, 
children and family activities, water parks, pools, and lakes in that order because lakes are great, especially on a really hot day, but not from swimming so much because sometimes I get sand in my ear and get infected. And, but uh, we've got some really great lakes for everything in Kansas. Um, let's start off with uh, Newton, right? We've got 2newton.com. We've got uh, the Travel with Convention and Visitors Bureau. That is not a terrible way to start any trip, is to ask your, your local convention visitor bureau what's going on in town. Um, is there a convention? Is there a big festival coming up? Um, well worth logging into their Facebook and, and joining to learn more. Same with your newspaper for, for the same reason. Find out what's going on. Know your, your local area. TripAdvisor.com. Uh, the great thing about TripAdvisor is that it's the individuals that make the reviews. So I might visit somewhere really interesting, get there, pay my bill, and then as I'm leaving, I have some problem with the bill or they overcharge for something and, and I can actually leave a review for that so the people in the future can expect to have that extra charge and not be surprised. But they've got an entire section there for Kansas vacations. Get outdoors, Kansas.org. Um, this one is done by the, the government, the pros. Uh, this isn't uh, some just person on the weekend designing something for fun. This is well done. Uh, Highway Alliances, this is sometimes more the weekender kind of, you know, playing around making a uh, web page for their, their local highway but sometimes it's really well done as in multiple towns can get together and pay the amount that it takes to develop a really good web page. And uh, well, let's just let's have a look see at one of them. Mm, once again, I might be taxing my website. Oh, maybe I'm just impatient. <laughs> let's try that one again. Yeah, okay, so not the newest web page on the blog, but it shows you what countries we're going through, uh, what's going on, the state sales and, and whatnot. So, you know, there's, there's a lot going on in Kansas. You might not expect it. That is kind of along the top of this thing there. Um, there we go. So check out your highway line, alliances. You might find something that you didn't expect. Here's one for the, the, for the 35, the, the travelI35.com, um, kind of an advertisement where they got Wellington, El Dorado, Kansas City. So flyoverpeople.net. Um, there's a series of books, Cheryl Unruh. She's done a great job. And uh, we do have books here at, at our library. Uh, Probably not these going to be online, but we've got a lot of things online. Um, Wildwestcountry.com. Um, if you're heading to the southwest Kansas, kind of, this isn't based on a highway, but it's a whole kind of a section of Kansas. they got a Facebook and everything there. Um, Kansas Byways. Um, Department of Wildlife and Parks Tourism site. Um, where they stop if you're planning well ahead of time. They've also got a great Facebook page. So let's have a look at their page. Kansas Byways. Kind of looks like we're having some troubles with our Facebook Live. I knew we shouldn't have used your phone. <laughs> My phone? Your crypto oh. phone. I think it's overheating. I suppose we can log into this other computer and, and see if it's given up the ghost or if it's still presenting only it's just not putting any video up. <laughs> uh, but so this Kansas byways. We really do have some great stuff here in Kansas. It's just Kansas Sampler Foundation. All right. So Marcy Penner, she lived in Inman. She goes all over the place. 501c3. 
uh, admission is to preserve, sustain, and grow rural, there's that word again, culture by educating Kansans about Kansas and by networking and supporting rural communities. The cause is to keep every town viable that shows the will and spirit to help itself. So they've got the Sandler Foundation. Uh, it's a clearinghouse basically of information for communities with, uh, with Marcy as a liaison. Uh, so we've got the uh, festival, the Explorer Club, the ERV, Explorer Research Voyage, uh, that she takes all over the place, Eight Wonders of Kansas Contest, and Get Kansas Blog. Um, so Rural Kansas Come and Get It is uh, promote rural communities, uh, Explorer Tourism helps them from any size attract Explorer types. The Explorer groups are interesting. Um, there's the Explorer Club, but uh, there's the festival they had back in 2015. Heaven only knows if they're going to be doing any sort of festival this year at all. Um, but uh, here's kind of it gives you an idea as far as what all they had. They had a lot going on. Eight Wonders of Kansas Guidebook. There's a second one now. Um, well worth checking out. Here's the Explorers Club where you visit with the locals, uh, just being curious, you know, when you go on by. That's it, that's how you're gonna get charity. All right, sure. Uh, rural Kansas, get rolled, kansas.org. Um, news not listed. Uh, for rural uh, community has to be on the site, you must have a representative, you must take a one day class. But we don't have anybody right now for Newton. So contact Wendy at KansasSampler.org if you're interested in doing that. Uh, 1,600 official explorers um, that do all sorts of things, from trying to eat every burger in the state to I know, visiting all the water parks. There's the burger guy. Tried them all. You would think you'd be bigger. Uh, TravelKansas.org. Um, this photo is from near Lucas. Uh, Lucas is a really interesting place to visit too. Uh, speaking of Kansas, Sunflower Journeys. It was a web uh, show and, and a website. Dave Kendall, Kansas native, uh, he just would do this little shows and he'd go around. Um, the one I remember growing up was he went around to every single soda fountain slash drugstore in the state and showed how they were doing, got a little bit of history on them. It was a great episode. And you can go back and watch all these old episodes from their webpage. Um, so there's, there's one that he did about libraries even. Uh, and you can click on that link right there. Uh, come October, everybody starts thinking about haunted places. We've got all sorts of websites about haunted places in Kansas. Um, Case Lib Info Reference blog. There was a little blog uh, about the um, about the uh, travel there by Brett in 2015. So, by all means, go through, have a look. There's one about the state capitol, about the renovation that they had there. Um, more on tech boomers. Um, and here's one about uh, community. If you're looking for a web page, go to community and you can go down to recreation and the arts, to find out about things happening just in uh, Newton. Under resources, you can find things about like Amtrak and travel, um, road conditions. Um, just so our web page, we try and keep it up um, so that you can keep up as well. If you're looking to learn new languages, our uh, website has Mango language learning. It's very much like Rosetta Stone to where it learns with you as far as how you learn. If you're going to uh, miss the word deer 15 times, it's gonna keep going at you until you finally get the word for deer right. Um, uh, if you go to our web page under maps, you'll find Google Earth, Kansas Department of Transportation, USGS maps, all sorts of maps and atlases available from a web page. Uh, our, the state maps are available as well. Uh, KS.org 
yeah, ks.org slash maps. You get uh, historic maps, uh, modal maps, traveler maps, special interest maps. And, you know, once we open, we've got all sorts of books, you know, that give you uh, around the world in 50 years, New York City, Kansas Guide to Kansas. What are you pointing at? I do have one that, that is a hiking guide to Kansas. So, um, and uh, as always, the staff is as always helpful, uh, offering to help you with your traveling adventures. And and even though we're all stuck at home, we'd be happy to help. So, thank you very much, and have a great day. <laughs>